Bill, this is Colonel Wynn. Colonel Wynn, this is Bill. <laughs> and th he's kind of an old timer, but he's a real special horse to me. Um, this horse was the tipping point for me as far as really starting to study the dynamics of dressage and the sport horses and keeping horses healthy for a long time. Dr. Miller wrote a chapter about this horse uh, in his book, Understanding Natural Horsemanship. It's a real honor to be part of his life, and it's a real honor for me to be able to share him with you. He's starting to get kind of old. Uh, he's starting to kind of show his age a little bit, but his heart's still really big, and so it's an honor for me to have you ride him, too. I don't know how long he's going to be around, but his mother and his mother's line and his father um, Colonel Freckles and Philanek were really, really famous bloodlines, and uh, he himself was an exceptional individual. He's a very touchy kind of horse, you know, he likes to kind of touch and see what's going on, and since he can't see that well, you will find that he'll touch you more than most horses. But it's kind of his way of saying, what are you, what are you doing, what are you up to, and so, you know, I'll let him do things that I might not let everybody else do. Real quickly, what I like to do is I like to use a metal comb if my horses have enough hair and flesh to kind of pull the dander up out of their skin. And uh, I'll kind of use it, I'll, I'll approach him in such a way that, that he knows I'm coming. And I'll try to keep one hand with contact on him somewhere. But I'll kind of use this brush in such a way that I kind of get down in there. If I think he's going to back up, I'll just kind of steady him a little bit. But if he's real thin skinned, and he's real short haired, I might just kind of use this brush the direction of his hair, like this. If he's got a little bit thicker skin on him, what I might do is I might come against the grain a little bit like this and kind of rough that hair up. Because what I'd like to do is pull that dirt up out of his sweat pores and bring it up to the surface. Now my wife's done a pretty good job of getting him clean right here, so we're not getting much up. That, um, that's for the putting the saddle on him makes yes. it more comfortable? Well, it's just more hygienic because what we'd like his skin to do is breathe, right? We'd like, we'd like his skin to go ahead and breathe just like ours. So it'd be kind of like a uh, exfoliation. So what we want to do is use this in such a way that if there's dirt and dander and stuff down in there, we can pull it up and it blows out on the ground. And pretty much anywhere He's got major muscle groups. I'd like to be able to pull that dander up, make sure that old crusty stuff that's down in his skin is out. And then once I've done that over his whole body, then I'll switch hands with my brushes. Now that I've got all that pulled up to the surface, I'm gonna go the direction his hair grows, clean my brush, take that dander off the top, and you'll notice I'll just do this and let anything fall on the ground that's there and lay his hair down just the way it was designed to grow. That's real important before the ride, real important after the ride. Now he knows that I don't have him tied up so he's kind of seeing what he can get away with. So just kind of get, you get a feel of that just for a little bit. So you'll start with that in your right hand, that in your left hand, and this is just kind of a point of contact so he knows where you're at. And he's pretty clean, so you can be a little bit closer. You want me to go against the... You can just go with his grain for now. Mm -hmm. So this is just your way of saying, I'm right here, brother. And so you don't even have to brush him. And then you brush him Do with I that one. you to keep this yes. on him? Yes. Okay. But you don't have to move it. It's just, okay. it's like I'm right here. Because your other hand's going to touch him and come off. Touch him and come off. And if you can't see, if I'm doing... It's kind of surprising, isn't it? Yeah. But if you can't see and I do this... You've got okay. this constant state of reference right here, which gives you a little bit of security, and that's what that touch is for me. Yeah? Because it's going to be touching, it's going to be off. So this one, you can just kind of almost like cradle him right here. Okay. Yeah. So just with the brush even, you can just like, yeah, perfect. And it also anchors you mentally. Nice. And now maybe got kind of go in a circle. Yes. And now, just so you start to learn the muscle memory, take this brush, curl your fingers so they're out of the way, and take this and just tap it right here on the end. 
and you tap this so the dirt can actually fall out on the ground. Perfect. And then you continue to clean him. Good. Good. And you'll be surprised, even on a young snorty colt, as long as you've got something giving them security here, you can do quite a bit with that other hand. And now go ahead and tap it out. Perfect. And even though he's clean, I saw a dander actually fly up through here. Now you can take this hand and slowly work your way back towards his hip. So you might lay this right here, and then the rest of your body starts to work back towards his hip. But see, now this is his security. Okay. Yes, it's nice. And then you can even work your way back. Remember how we were saying hello to the horses the other night up on their withers? Now you can actually go all the way back to his hip. Good. And then clean your brush out. Very nice. Good. Now you can come back to the beginning of the horse or the front of the horse and you can switch brushes. And, and just for one time, kind of curve your hand and since your cinch is gonna be right here, go ahead and brush this out too because that's real important if our girth, yeah. With this? Yes, sir. This one. Yep, perfect. Because since that's where we're gonna be, we wanna make sure that we get underneath there and clean that up because we don't wanna put a saddle up underneath there and, and not have paid attention to kind of cleaning that area up. Because sometimes horses' hair will kind of get a little pile up there and, and um, it'll irritate them if we don't kind of get that cleaned up. Good. Good. And then basically we would switch brushes. So the curry comb would go to our left hand and then the boar bristle brush would come to our left hand. And now this is just for cleaning this brush now. Good. And usually I start at the very top Kind of like if I was doing windows. I'll work my way from the front to the top, from the top, and then I'll kind of go down. And once I feel like I've really got that hair laid down and I've pulled all the dust and dirt and dander and burrs and everything kind of up in my brush, I want to clean my brush. And so this one, remember, we're going to take this brush and we're going to kind of hold this towards the ground and we're going to go. Okay. Yep. And it's just, you're just laying down memories for future use. Good. See all that dander fly off? Even though my wife cleaned him and I've cleaned him, you're still getting stuff coming up. Good. And you just, if you ever have a question about which way to brush the hair, just brush the direction it grows. Good. Good. And you can take this up to his withers now, and that's just your way of saying hello. And then this one can be your contact point, and that one can go ahead and work back. and. You can brush all the way down through his major muscle groups. There you go. And see, I can still see dander coming off of this horse. Part of it is because he's a range horse now and he kind of lives out in the open. Then the last thing I might do with your hairbrush, that's pretty good. And as, as long as he's got muscles there, I like to brush it and know that I've got it pretty clean. If it's just bones, tendons, and ligaments, then I'm gonna brush it in a little bit different kind of manner because then I know they don't have to breathe quite the same. So what I might do is, now that you've got him pretty clean, I might take this boar bristle brush and I might just kind of use the back of my hand now for contact. I've got the lead rope and I might just kind of squat down here and just kind of clean his feet up a little bit. Oh, I think he's liking this. And now I'll just kind of use the back of my hand here for contact. And rather than getting way out here and leaning over and putting my head towards him, I'm going to kind of get right here and just real quickly kind of get in there, brush him a little bit in such a way that I don't surprise him. Then obviously we do the same thing on the other side. Thank you to my wife. We don't really have to. Now this is a good sign right here. See how his eyes kind of half asleep? Mm -hmm. That's how relaxed he is. So that's good, Bill. This horse is kind of telling me he's licking his lips here a little bit and his eyes about half shut. So he's telling me just with his body language that he's really content with your left hand of contact and your right hand of brushing. And he's liking life. He's liking the attention. And he's super sedate about the whole deal. We've actually done some studies to find that these uh, mature horses, their blood pressure, once we halter them and start brushing, their blood pressure of the horse and the human drop.